gonna see how I took spray paint and created some beautiful undertones for this finish. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Okay, so I get a lot of emails every week still of people wanting white marbles, but now they're starting to want variations of white, uh, not just the pure white or just the pure white and gray. So I have really uh, done quite a few of these finishes where I'm using the white but I'm bringing in undertones from the bottom up that you're kind of seeing through the epoxy. So what I'm gonna do here is show you guys how to create some really cool undertones so that those colors don't just jump out at you when you walk in the door. They're very subtle. Um, all right, and we're gonna do this all with spray paint. All right, so we're gonna kind of do several colors on this one piece just so you can kind of see different colors. I'm gonna come in first with um, antique pewter. It is a hammered spray. You don't have to use a hammered spray. Uh, you can basically use any kind of spray paint that you want uh, as long as you let it dry completely before we go to the next step, which is to put the epoxy. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kind of come in here and start laying down some really cool patterns. Like I said, I want this just to be undertones. You're really not gonna see a whole lot of it. I'm gonna come up to the front, get my edges. And I'm gonna fog it out. See how it's very soft here? I'm gonna kind of fog that out so that I don't have a really hard line. I'll come back over here. I can do it. This I'm just gonna kinda, kinda cause a little bit different pattern. Kinda bring that in. Mm, maybe a little bit here. And I just did this very softly. I just barely fogged that. Now that was with a darker silver. Let me come around and grab my front edge. I do wanna have some of my white showing through there. I don't want it to be really hard. I do want some of the original white color to show through there. All right, now I'm gonna come in with uh, aluminum. And again, this can be something that you just want to customize on your own. You don't have to use these colors. The aluminum's gonna be a little bit brighter silver. It'll be a little bit of contrast next to this really dark pewter. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit right there. I like that, how it kind of creates that look on that rock. I'll add a little bit right here. And again, this is a preference on how much undertones that you want to create. Now I'm gonna actually come in with a blue. This is, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna come in with black. All right, so this is black. And this happens to be a hammered spray. But again, that's completely up to you. I think I'm gonna come in here with my black. I'm gonna kinda come in on one side, kinda create that almost like a vein look. Let me come in here. Now, I got drips because of my glove. Be really careful when you're spraying. If your glove goes over your spray nozzle right here, you'll get these little drips. But I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and then I'll come back over it with the gray. All right, let me get a little bit on my edge in the front. Now, if you don't want it to be quite so striated, you can come in with bigger areas of uh, your color and just do more blocks. You definitely don't have to do it in a striated type of a pattern. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of an accent color of blue. And again, guys, you can decide if this is something that you wanna do or just keep it to your grace. Just add a little bit of that blue. All right, so we're gonna let this dry and we're gonna go mix up our epoxy. 
we're using the Stone Coat Countertop Art Coat because this is a white finish and the Art Coat has uh, probably the highest amount of UV additives of any of the epoxies, I believe, in my opinion, on the market. Um, I really, really like this product. product. It has the same characteristics as the original formula of Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. Same high heat resistance, same high scratch durability resistance, just has a lot of UV protection. All right, it's a one-to-one -one product, uh, one-to-one -one ratio, and we're gonna do three ounces per square foot. All right, so we're gonna do 32 ounces, so that's gonna be 16 of part B, and I like to do part B first. And the reason I like to do that is part B is quite a bit um, more fluid, I guess, less viscous, it's not as thick. So when you pour in A, you'll notice A is quite a bit thicker. A will just fall down through B, and it seemed to get a much better uh, and more, I guess, um, precise measurement, more accurate measurement. Now, if you happen to move, put part A first, that's definitely not gonna be an issue. It's just a little bit easier to do B first. All right, we're gonna mix for two minutes. And I'm not gonna make my drill go really fast because if I do that, what's gonna happen, I'm gonna create a vortex in the product and it's gonna suck down here. All right, so once I've mixed it with the paddle mixer, I like to come in with a popsicle stick and actually scrape my edges and then take that and really stir it well. What that does is any of that product that hasn't been thoroughly mixed that's on your edges, you're able to take that and mix it well. If you don't do this, there's a chance that you could, when you pour out your material, that unmixed material will get on your surface and you'll have sticky spots. So for this finish, I'm gonna take all of my epoxy and I'm gonna evenly separate it into my cups. Now, again, this is something that you need to decide um, if you don't want quite as much bling, then you don't have to put quite as much of the clear that's gonna have the diamond dust in it. That's, again, your decision. Okay, so here we go. So once you're finished using your bucket, you can take your bucket and you can place it upside down, let it cure overnight, even better if you let it do it a couple of days. And then what will happen is you'll be able to pop all of that epoxy out and you'll have a brand new clean bucket. Okay, so now we're gonna tint our clear epoxy. We're gonna start off with white alumilite dye. This is available on my website. And we're gonna make this cup very opaque, meaning I don't want to be able to see through to the surface below or to the grain on our stick. So you can see it's very opaque. Now this cup, I want to be very transparent. So actually all I'm gonna do is take my stick And this is, lit. I'm gonna get a little more opaque than that, so I'm gonna take a little bit more. There we go. You can see it's a very milky color. And that's what I'm going for, okay? Then we're gonna come in here with white mica metallic powder. This also is on our website. That's a very pretty metallic. Now you can see I also did that very opaque so you can't see through to the grain of the stick. And then on our diamond dust, in our clear, that's about all we need. And you can see that diamond dust really goes a long way. All right, so our surface is dry and now it's time to start laying down the colors. I like to start with my white opaque first. Kind of starts the finish off and then I can manipulate everything else around this. So I wanna put my, my opaque colors 
mostly where there's white. I don't want to cover up my undertones with an opaque color. So I'll come, and it's not going to hurt to get a little bit on there because you're, you're going to want a little bit of that color. All right, I'm going to save a little bit of that product in my cup. All right, that was the white opaque. This is the white metallic powder. And you can see, even though we have white, we do have contrast. And that's what I'm going for, is that contrast in all of these whites. Keeping in that striated pattern. Again, I'm gonna leave some in my cup. All right, now we're gonna come in with the opaque and you know I am going to make it just a little bit more opaque out in this different light. I'm going to add a little bit more. All right just a tiny bit. Now we're going to start coming over our color. That transparency of the Epoxy is going to allow us to see down in to our color. I'm just going to leave that there. I'm not really worried about having like extra of that in the cup. And then here is our clear. This has the diamond dust in it. Now I do want there to be bling kind of throughout the table, but I want a little more of it right over our color. And being that the epoxy is clear and just has a little bit of that diamond dust in it, you'll really be able to see those colors. Again, I'm gonna leave a little bit in my cup. Okay, I like to torch it just a little bit before um, I start spreading it. It just makes it a little more fluid and it's easier to spread. All right, take my hand, use a roller. You could use a trial at this point. I love using my hand. Now I'm going to take some of that color and very lightly I'll start kind of blending it over my colored areas, but I'm going to do it very softly and very lightly. I'm also being very mindful to keep separation in my colors. I don't want to meld all my colors together because then I don't have the depth that I'm really going for. Now you can see how by putting that white opaque close to the edge of the color, you're concealing and hiding that hard edge that we created with the spray paint. Now, if you wanna have that color of that spray paint be a little more muted and not shine through so much, take your white and bring it over the top more. Your white opaque so that you have a little bit more color on the top of that spray paint. I like to run my hand underneath that edge. So with these rock edges, you can kind of tap and really get that epoxy in the highs and those lows. That's another reason I like to use my hands because if I do get something in that epoxy, I can feel it. All right. Okay, so this is so pretty. And I could walk away right now, but I'm not going to. We're gonna start having some fun with some designs now on top of this. All right, so this is really, really pretty. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create depth by adding a design now on top. So we're gonna kind of sandwich our design elements in between the epoxy. We have it on the bottom, we laid our epoxy out, now we're gonna put a little bit of design element on top. So let's, let's come in with, I think I wanna bring in a little bit of, hmm, maybe some white. Let's bring in some very, very uh, slight white veins. Now we can do this two different ways. We can bring in our spray paint or we can take the white that we left in our cup 
and we can just start laying down some very, very light veins over the top. Now, as this starts to move, these veins will really soften out. And that's kind of what I'm going for is a very, very soft vein because this epoxy is still very, very fresh. So it's going to kind of continue to move. All right, I like that. But I'm also going to come in here with a little bit of spray paint. And here we can get a little more detailed. Also, what you can do is once you have that spray paint on top, come in with a little bit of your clear isopropyl alcohol and very, very slight, add a little bit of spritz and you'll cause that vein to have a little bit of character there. Isn't that pretty? Another way I like to add veins uh, or some character on top is actually take some epoxy in my hand. And it's real important that you make sure that you have that epoxy on your hand. If you don't, what can happen is uh, basically you're going to end up just spray painting your glove. So make sure you have plenty of that. Take your spray paint. Put it in your hand and really mix it up well, okay? Then come over and very lightly just run your hand over the surface. And what happens is that's laying down very small detail over the top. And guys, remember, you can stop at any stage and it can be a complete finish. But I'm practicing my inability to walk away. So we're gonna just keep playing with this for a little bit. And be very careful, guys. If you do this, you can really kind of take over your finish if you go too far with too much color. All right, I think I'm gonna actually come in here with my dark spray paint. And I'm gonna get a little more detailed with some dark veins. Now this is a hammered paint, so it's gonna react a little differently. I'm actually gonna put some dark veins here in the light area, so you'll really see that vein. And again, this is just preference on how much you want to add, how much detail you want on the top. All right, I like that a lot. All right, let's hit it with a little alcohol. And everywhere that I drug my hand, with the white, it's going to now fracture. Now you also don't want to add too much alcohol to your surface because what'll happen is you will uh, get too much of that alcohol and your epoxy is going to get very runny. Now I'm gonna come up to the front side and I'm gonna add a little bit of color. I like to sometimes take that, those drips, put a little bit of paint in it, and run over my edges. Add some color into the surface. You can even just come back and pick up some of your drips, run it over that edge, and it'll be just enough of that color in there to create a really pretty edge as this kind of run, runs over. If you see anything that you don't like that maybe looks man-made, just drag your finger through it. If you have any little dots. All right, so again, this is a beautiful finish, guys. You can stop just about anywhere that you wanna stop. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda do one more layer. That's what really builds interest when you're doing these tops is just to layer and layer and layer. The more layers you put, the more um, designs 
and design element and the more your eye just loves it. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some granification on it. So I'm gonna take my white. I think I'm gonna come over, let's see, I'm only gonna do one or two areas so that you guys can see the difference. I'm just gonna come over here and fog very opaquely white spray paint. And then I'm gonna come in, just drop. Now guys, if you're doing this without a camera in front of you where you're having to talk, I suggest that you wear a mask when you're working with spray paint. I don't worry about the VOCs from my epoxy because I'm using Stone Coat, which is a zero VOC product. Also, I'm in a very well ventilated shop, but I do like to wear my PPE when I'm working with my spray paint, when I'm not on camera. For all you haters out there that always send me mail why I don't have a mask on, this is why. So I can talk to you guys. All right, so this is one way to really create a granification over uh, any surface is just by taking that spray paint and spraying it. Now, when you do this to your white, you have to give that white plenty of time to react with the epoxy because it's going to take time to really kind of sell and create a really pretty lacing effect. So don't judge it right off the bat. Give it some time. If you don't like that granification on top, leave it just like it is with just that little bit of detail on top. I love this. I love this, the depth that this is creating by putting that small vein on top. You can see I actually went over the top of the white epoxy that I laid down as a vein. So it just gives one more layer of depth. I'm gonna actually come in here with the white mica and I'm just gonna lay some more veins and as the epoxy starts to move and continue to move those veins will soften out and look very natural almost look like little cracks in the finish all that's going to soften out a little bit of a torch i don't like to do too much heat on these finishes because it's going to cause my epoxy to move too much and I'm really liking the finish as it's starting to set up, but I'm gonna hit it just a little bit. All right, guys, I'm gonna let this white kind of keep moving a little bit and we'll be back in just a little bit and show you what it looks like. All right, guys, it's been about four hours or so. Uh, everything is quit dripping. The epoxy has quit moving. And this is a beautiful finish. So tell me what you would do in the comments below. Would you have added blue? Or would you have stayed with just maybe the grays? Would you have done a fracture, which gives it more of a granification, a granite type look? Would you have done that? Or would you leave it? like it is on this side. Let me know what you would do. All right, this is absolutely gorgeous. Now, since this is just a sample board, we're not gonna go put a flood coat in a UTC. But if this were an actual piece that I was gonna install, our next step would be to wait 24 hours, come back, do a clear flood coat, same product, art coat, and then we would let that cure for 24 hours and then I would come over with the ultimate top coat. Now, in a finish like this, my favorite is the matte finish because it really takes the high gloss that that kind of what, in my opinion, kind of plastic look and it knocks that, that high shine down and then it really makes it look like a natural piece of stone. It is absolutely gorgeous, but the UTC comes in gloss as well. And if you like this glossy look, by all means, put the gloss. But I highly recommend putting the UTC 
whether you're doing the gloss or the matte, because of the amount of durability and protection that it gives your uh, project. We do have videos, we'll link them in the description on showing you how to do both the gloss and the matte finish. All of these products you can find on my website, rk3designs.com. Also sign up for our newsletter. We send out exclusive discount promo codes on our products and also our classes to our newsletter followers. All right, guys, what do you think? You like it? Did I do a good job? If I did, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell for future notifications. That way, every single time we go live or we do a tutorial, you'll get a notification. All right, guys, until next week. Don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.